uh, yet have a discussion with Professor Salawati. Professor Salawati, time is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, this is a very interesting topic. Uh, despite we only have about 15, 70 students, still for me, it's a very interesting topic. Introduction to law. Um, many people always come out with this issue that what's so important about law? What's so important about law? Why we need law? Even even when you when even when you you are born, you already binded with the law. Not even born yet, you already bonded with that. You know, uh, I would like to to give um example in in my country, how law is play a very very significance uh to human being. Yeah. Okay. For example, if you are having a um, wedlock child, for example, you committed adultery and you're not married. I do believe that the situation may be different in Indonesia, but in Malaysia, if you're Muslim, if you are Muslim, you're going to have a very terrible situation. Why? Because you are not married. And when you are not married, you cannot, uh, at the period reason, you cannot register the baby. Only after the NGOs was telling that what's wrong with the baby, whoever committed the thing is the parents, you see, and why blame the babies? So after all the hassle at the parliament and all that, okay, we allow the baby to register uh, the birth registration and get the citizenship, but the column of the father is empty because the parents are not married. It's a very tremendous consequences in the future. Because, you know, Eastern people love gossiping. Like when the teacher at school, despite they have to um, have to uh, not to talk about this thing to others, they, they tell them to do that. They say, uh-huh, these kids, illegitimate child, blah, 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 blah. So that is the stigma that the kids have to uh, face for the rest of their life. Just that if you do not register the baby, the baby automatically will not be a Malaysian citizen, despite the parents. So see, I mean, from your you are born yeah, in a Malaysia, you are being governed by the law to know, first of all, right to live. Because when you don't have a right to live, that's why the people will then that's why you have a right to know what is your citizenship. And then and that's why I think all the country like Malaysia, we don't have the dual nationality. So whoever born in Malaysia, yeah, the parents are not Malaysian, they can get the permanent resident but not Malaysian citizen. Yeah, we don't practice that unless you have to go for a specific uh, application and can prove and justify why you can become Malaysian citizen but you have to end up whatever citizenship that you have at that moment because we don't practice to a citizen. To that extent, you know. So for me, why is like that? Why, why we, we are so much concerned on law? Because the topic is introduction to law. Because it's a govern us. The law is govern us, belong uh, to the human being, according to the, even not, I don't like to say the birth country, because uh, maybe many um, Indonesian or Malaysian, they are born in other country. But to ensure that where you belong to, this determines your rights as human being. For example, if your passport is an Indonesian passport, you are being protected by a government when you are in your country because that is the jurisdiction and the sovereignty country of Indonesia. So whoever comes to Indonesia, you need to respect and follow the Indonesian law, no matter what you say. Uh, for example, Thailand, you can't say bad about their king uh, in Malaysia. Uh, people love to say bad about king, but we are, don't have the le majeste law, so we just, you know, persecute them going to a penal court or, or the, another act. But in Thailand, don't you ever they say bad about their king, you know, especially the previous king, not the present king, the yeah. previous king. You will be, end up in jail because for them the king is like a god. So that's why for me very important for us to to know why we must have a law and why law is really important in our life. Law also not only govern who you are, what you're going to do, and also actually to determine the rights of a country, to do what they're supposed to do, whether to protect, to punish, or to give a lesson to anyone that in their sovereignty. That's why another country cannot come and talk about the other country like, hey, what are you doing with your law? Your law is look backwards. You can't say that because you, you do not have a right to 
even give a command to other countries' law. Because you are not there. You are not the citizen. The citizen, the parliament, the president, the cabinet knows better. But what you can do, you can only protest. You can only give your opinion. Because the law allows you to do that. That's why our constitution is, the, is like above everything. Since that Malaysia and Indonesia are not practicing the Sharia law or whatsoever. So we actually have to respect our constitution. So this constitution is actually cannot be taken away. And that is the most supreme law in our country. And we abide by that. Then, then somebody was telling like, so if like that, what is the effect on us? The effect of us is because we want to ensure the society is in a good and a peace and harmony. If you don't have a law, can you imagine, even with the we having law, people always go beyond it, especially in the time of COVID. I can say that the numbers of the crimes happen in Malaysia is quite high during the COVID. Then people was talking about why, 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 why is it happen? Because people are staying at home. Staying at home means no income for about 75% of Malaysian people. Not all the Malaysian people get um, more than 5,000 ringgit per month. You're going to be surprised. The major group in Malaysia is get um, around, I can say, the in the middle class. The largest group is a middle class. But not the middle class also going to be the low class. Because of they're losing the job, you know, I'm talking about people from aviation industries, people from uh, tourism industries, people who are doing the small industries, you know, it's not really, it's really not good for them. So the symbol of it is we see that the rise of the numbers of a crime is very high. The crimes are now is crazy. Previously, I think uh, we have the people who snatch the handbag, robbery, but now robbery plus murder. That is what happened. I think even over the past two weeks, I see that the number is quite dangerous and it's quite quite worried because whoever, like there's the last case, is the single mother, uh, 40-something, come from selling his goods. He being robbed, he be, she being killed. So we was like, feel like so disturbed, like, okay, if you want to rob her, then you rob her, then don't kill her because she's a single mother, she got four children. Now how? So this is the thing that we I see that COVID really change the perception of law, the words that we see law. We no more think that uh, we, we was more about how what, what to eat, how to put the, the family tables eh, with the foods. We, we, we're not doing like, okay, we have to be, because previously people, even though they are living in the heart condition, but still they can move. You know, you can move, they can get the help from others. But now, the numbers of people are losing the job are getting higher and higher. So people, the tendency is like, who cares with the law? We want to eat. And how the law, which is being, you know, implemented and uh, passed at, uh, at the parliament, which is all done before COVID. Some law is like, cannot cope with the situation. So this is very important for me to discuss that the introduction to the law is actually not only just to introduce you to the law, it's to make you to think what the law can do with your life. Maybe you, 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 you might think that uh, we are studying law, we know law is like this, we are like that, but actually it's more beyond that. It's beyond that. Why I say so? Because we, we always have the tendency that the law is just in a book. It's in a book. Is an act like in Malaysia, you can find it in the shelf at the library. Or oh, you won't be surprised. Malaysia have so many laws. So, so, so many. Govern animal, govern people, govern government, govern businesses, govern everything. But the implementation, very weak. Why? Corruption. Why? Nepotism. Why? Because your cronies. Uh, as I said to, to your lecture before, what makes this thing happen after uh, Malaysia independent for 63 years? Because it's from the politician. I blame the politician. I don't want to blame the system because the politician who actually make the government, they are the one who practice this. If they not practice this, they're not going to be the, uh, any problem because they are practicing this. Because whoever become the leader, then the follower were like clapping the hand and say, okay, what can I get from this? The tender, the contract, the government contract. So you can see, of course, as the ministers or the people in the cabinet, they want to be there forever as they can. 
you know, they want their party to be lead the country. So what they do, they, they will ensure that they give it all to their followers. So what about us? What about people like me who don't have any interest in the politics? I still have to go to work. I pay tax every month. And if that every month is not enough, every April of the year, I have to pay more to my government. So I feel like, wow, you know, what law is this? You know, people are start to question it. Like, what is this? This is what I said. Why we need to know the law? It's not about that. Actually, we have many laws. I believe in Indonesia also, you have many laws. But the implementation that we question. To write a law, to, to, uh, to have it to be discussed in the parliament or in any uh, bodies in the government, it's, it can be done. But the implementation, who wants to do that? Do you have enough enforcement power to do that? And if you do, can your officer is actually uh, follow the rules or I can say, can they also free from corruption? That's a question. I, I don't want to be um, uh, apologetic by saying that, okay, students, the law is governed you, the law is super, supposed to be like this, your country, blah, blah. I think that, that that's not the, the way I have to talk to the law student. The law student is the one who are already understand their society. That's why you be in the faculty of law. You are very special from other faculty without prejudice because we have to uh, determine and define the law for our country after we graduate. And the government must listen to us. You know, they must get our opinion before they amend or create any law for the people because they have to look the situation of the uh, situation of the people. What what's law is to do to govern us? But if you do the law, which is cannot govern the people or make people life in terrible, then what's law is it? That is not the law. That is more to it. The dictator. For example, I take one thing. La. Wearing mask. It's a compulsory in Malaysia in public to wearing mask. But even though you might say mm, the mask price is 70 cents now, it's very cheap. For the people with money, 70 cents, not, maybe nothing. But for those of who are living in the very desperate situation. 70 also is a big deal for them. So I get the many, many times we read in our Facebook, in Instagram, people keep complaining to, to the government. You guys are the one that make the election in Sabah. And now you see from Sabah election that COVID is spread through all out Malaysia. The stupidity of the government, they say. Because you are talking about power during this COVID. If you don't have that election, Maybe we don't have this kind of situation like, you know, for last week, since last uh, February, uh, since last Saturday, lockdown the whole Malaysia except the three states at the northern and east coast. What's the point? You make our life more, more dangerous. You make like we are more stressful. Because why? If me, I have a job, I still have my salary every month, I feel, it, I feel stressed. I feel stressed because I have to be at home and I have to look at my children online study and my children keep feeling that they cannot stay at home. They want to go out, but I cannot go out because if you go out, there is a roadblock of a police and if you are more than two person, which is just only to buy your uh, things or your goods, you, they will uh, compound you 1,000 ringgit per person. I'm not going to take that things. And this is what they are doing. They go to the market. Sometimes you see them the small seller and all that, they don't have money. So they don't wearing the, the, the mask. Then what happened is they compound that people with 1,000 ringgit Malaysia. So all the people say, why don't you use your brain? This is a time of desperate of all the people. Why don't you just advise first? Say, Pachi, okay, uncle, would you like to wearing the mask? Or you must provide the mask, the people say. You don't do that. What the government are doing? So you can see that the people are talking about Government must show the practicality of the law. Don't put blame on the people. You must do it first. And then when we are angry, we see many of our state representative or ministers even come back from overseas. They don't go for quarantine. And they say, it's okay. Uh, I, I give four salary. I, I as, as a feel sorry for it. I give my four salary every four months to all of you. I, I was like, what the stupidity that he tried to tell us? Law is a law and need to be done and you don't want to go quarantine, you should be punished for that under the act of a disease. But he doesn't want to because he was thinking about, uh, okay, I'm so sorry, I give my salary, my four-month salary to the government to, to say sorry. 
and then at the opposition representative also so stupid i have a birthday party with my friend at the beach which is huge group and a no mask no nothing so what can i say when you have the representative are stupid like this you don't respect the law and you expect us to respect the law this is what i think what you want to introduce what you want to show that actually the introduction to law is actually to ensure that the government having a good law for the people to maintain peace and harmony that's how is it that's for me i i was like i feel myself like very bad very very bad in the situation you don't even have any um you not even have any humanity uh or we call it uh, like manusiawi to look on other human being can i ask any one of you do you want this covid or not have you ever crossed your mind that this covid come to us in 2020 you know that i have a lots of thing to do especially end of the year one of it is to go to your university it's, it's already on my plan because my my two days uh, visit at samarang last year is not enough so i i was like feel that oh okay i need to i need to go again and i plan it nicely i say okay why not you know november i'll come there but you see we are meeting you just online why because people people never thought this you know please because i think this is this is the thing that i feel like people don't don't want people never thought i supposed to also not only in samarang at this time i was supposed to be in vietnam last week to present my people all gone of course if i said to you you know i want to see you face to face because i want to tell you how is law is supposed to but the point is the problem that we face is if the government fail to portray what is law is all about if the ministers fail to portray to us so what's the point to having law that's why the normal people say you want what you want you want to see that okay i read i i want to to tell you that last week we uh we finished the the visibility study and also uh people um uh having this particip participate in the who's actually the most corrupt in malaysia number one is police officer number one is police officer police officer and this is the things that uh i think that i'm not surprised first is a police officer in malaysia second is the uh the uh the people who doing the enforcement not 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 necessarily not necessarily police like immigration custom where they can take where they can take um, uh money from the customers or the people that are dealing with them third is um lawyers or magistrate or judges see this uh, or uh, attorney general chambers i mean the dpp deputy public prosecutors judge magistrate is number three and then for is a politician so for me uh, what's so surprised about it is all the people who are supposed to uphold the law they are the one who corrupt the law this is in malaysia this is this is this is the last week they, they 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 come out with that diagram how many percent the police officers or police is about 57 percent so please please this is a thing this this is this is something that i think that you know uh it's not it's supposed not to 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 be happen because police is supposed that that's why i'm not surprised because even my child can say that when the police is like in the situation in Malaysia that normally police will, will go at the highway and when they say this is somebody that they can attack or foreigners, then it will stop them. Then they say, okay, where is your passport? Where is your ID? Where is your license? Blah, 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 blah. And then they will try to create out whatever you, you bring the wrong things in your car. What wrong things? You know, sometimes they say, hey, just now that I saw you, you're using the handphone, even though you don't do that. So you, you don't want a problem with them. You want to go to your destination. So how much you want? And I'd say, okay, 30 ringgit, 40 ringgit, 50 ringgit. It's happened once to me. It's happened once to me. Um, I was uh, I was driving uh, the area of a compound of my house, want to go to my university. And that area is like a little bit healed. And then suddenly, I, I about five minutes, I drive, suddenly I, there is a roadblock and they say, okay, your car, you know, they, they show my car have to stop. I said, what's the problem? I want to go to my university. And then they say, oh, I saw you using your phone. Then I was like, Huh? What the hell are you talking about? Using my phone? I don't using my phone. My brother beside me, yes. 
He's using his phone because he's not driving, but I'm driving. And the police say, no, no, you are the one. I said, me? Hey, look at my phone. My phone is my, in my handbag. Oh, I'm very superb then. I can drive it and then put back in my handbag. And I was like, I said, no, I'm not doing this. He said, yeah, no, no. My friend so, show that, uh, show to me. You did. I said, where's your friends? Oh, my friend is on top of the hill. Okay, ask him to come down. I said, show to me any videos that he can record that I'm using my phone. Suddenly, we found out there's no friends on the top of the hill. It's only he himself. He just like pick up the car, whatever they want. Okay, please, please, please. So, what's, what is this? Then I say, what do you want actually? If you want, you were thinking I want to give you a bribe. No, no, no. I'm not giving even a single sign. From my hard work to you, I say. You want to, you want to put me, a, a, a summon, please put me. I bring it to court. I fight it. I want the evidence that I am using the phone. Because he knows that I'm not. And he's so surprised that I'm not going to give to him a money. Then he say, okay, okay, go, go, go. This just happened to me. I was like, what the hell are you talking here? I mean, you want to tell the young pre-generation, oh, my young generation, you have to respect the law. You have to do this. But you yourself never use that things. This was sometimes, I, do, I, I really like, I really don't like when people say, young generation this, young generation that. I say, young generation learn from you. They learn from the best. And the best is you, the most corrupt people. They don't like me. They don't like me because I'm just mean like that. For me, you come in and say, hey, you young people, huh? you are very selective. You don't want to work in this area. You want to have more money. Of course, they want to have more money because you, their parents' picture money is important. And you, as a government, picture money is number one. So what you're talking, you're talking this, this kid will say, it's okay, I want to live in the poverty line. No, they won't. And you won't be surprised. We have the studies among all the higher institutions in Malaysia regarding corruption. What we get, 67% of our students say it's okay to give a bribe. And to take the bribe. It's a university student, you know. A whole Malaysia, we make that uh, uh, issues and we say, okay, fill up. Nobody will know who you are. We just know this from this university, that university. Far not 67% of our young people that you study in university say it's okay to give and take a bribe. What gonna be happen? What gonna be happen? Yeah, what gonna be happen uh, to, 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 to our generation? What gonna be happen to our generation? Because you you are the one, you are the one who, who, who thinking that, that the young generation is like a child. That is the law that you have. So when you see the, the issues of corruption are getting more rampant, are getting a practice and become habits and culture, you think that, oh, it's a very heavy, very, very bad situation. So we can do, um, maybe we, we have to enact another law. You can enact another law, but again, enforcement like what? This is the way that why we are still third world country. If you look at your country and my country, we have so many resources. I do believe Indonesia has so much resources than Malaysia. From water to forest to uh, acting uh, minerals. So you Indonesia are you know, very huge country. Do not have a problem, supposed. And so also my country. But why we are still at the developing country, developing country. Because we cannot, we cannot control the levels of the corruption. And who hold the people is the politics. And what the politics can do, the politics can suddenly turn, be another way around to fulfill the satisfaction for the people in the politics. I think very simple. Somehow or other, we are questioned. Why suddenly the, the former politician have a case at court, for example, Najib Razak, when the judge giving him a sentence, suddenly you can see many people in, 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 in uh, his followers say, this is very bad, the judge is like that. This. What's, they are contempt of court. They're supposed to be, you know, accept it. Your boss has done the wrong thing. Uh, but how? Because you yourself, it's like if it, your opponent or the people who do not have interest being caught and being executed by the court, you say it's okay nothing to do with me but when the people that you have something or the interest on it and it happened you will say oh cannot the judge is very bad the judge don't see the fact the judge blah 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 all the judges are wrong but when when your friend or your the person that you like is actually becoming prime ministers or holding the government you will see all the friends will be free i'm not surprised i got one politician 
the, the using the religion we got one politi uh, one party in Malaysia we call uh, pasti party Islam se Malaysia pas this is now uh, major to, together with the present they are the, the the mixed government now today i'm so sorry i don't believe in people who using religion to be a politician i want to see the law do not come to me and say i'm islamic party i'm christian party i'm buddhist party go to hell with you do not bring religion in a politics because politics is dirty religion are nothing to do with that you know i want to take only the, the this this particular islamic so called party they holding one state in kelantan yeah this for centuries kelantan cannot change the government only they were elect for the past all but you go and see how the people live there majority of the people living in a very difficult situation poverty is actually rampant very much you know sometimes i don't want to read a newspaper people living in the condition same like a cow even they have a house beside the cow's place i was like what is this and when i see which state which area is a glantan i don't want to read because i know it if you are bring the islamic in the way you are politics why you cannot help the people out from the poverty is it islam love poverty what the prophet said you know what is the time of khalifa abdul aziz what is the life of the muslim at that time until we cannot find the poor people we don't know how to break the zakat because everyone is rich then lately they make me really my 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 blood temperature is so high they said okay since that we doing well in that state we need to increase our salary i don't know what words that i want to say to these people and with all the you know the scab and feel that oh subhanallah oh allah akbar i said this is the most bullshit ever i can see and all my friend that's make a joke that's why i said what what why are you using using illegal things to legalize illegal things in this covid people needs money why don't you cut your salary your enough salary your high salary a politician in malaysia having a high salary why don't you cut it and 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 make a one fund for your people you know who actually applauds and respect the law is one figure he is we call it ustad abid liu uh, he's a chinese convert this this is this is a he he's a he's a millionaire you know what when we pack him say ustad look this is a people need help tomorrow he went tomorrow he went for the area in sabah the lockdown is almost one month two months now people don't get the job you know sabah is also one of the poor state in malaysia he fly two jets two big aeroplane with 100 tons of rice flour from from kuala lumpur to sabah who is he nobody he just a public figure because he's a ustad and he give uh, uh, many uh, i think um, talk on the facebook and all that he said he's do some business he has a supermarket and also restaurant he, he he can do so much he went in during the the, the lockdown he's the one with his lorry a big he will have a very big lorry a trailer he bring the food to all the people i was like what a shame if i'm a politician if i am a minister i should you know resign i fail to deliver to my people this way for me what should i talk about introduction to law to the law student who know already you know the 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 supreme of law of each country but i want to bring my student and bring all of you to another dimension another step another level for you to be a much better than other friends from other faculty this is a level that we need to argue this is the level where we need to look at our government are they doing well especially during this covid you know everyone has said oh covid era covid okay so covid you cannot do the work or because of COVID, uh, the government no function. And if because of COVID, the government can do anything to the people. Cannot. That is how the law is being practiced. That's why for me, what's the point to have a ministers? What's the point to have um, prime ministers that really do not know how to function? Why for me, what is the interest of a people? Number one, the interest of a people. What you have done, economic situation because not the country would not be peace without the peaceful of economic i do believe if there are so many people hungry that will be very hard for you to sleep at night 
because first you are afraid that your house will be robbed second you cannot you feel bad because you can see so many poor people now if i go out i can see so many poor people at bank i have to say it is a scenario in my country i just go to the bank you know sometimes just 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 to have a certain transaction outside of the bank despite the covid people say you must have you know um social distancing and so on but still the people come and say you know they are selling so many things cakes uh snacks you name it and say please buy please buy for me because if you don't buy my kids are not eating anything today and that that things happened yesterday that things happened yesterday when when i just went out for a while to do some transaction then i out from the bank there is a handicapped man bring three chocolates cakes and say uh can you buy for me i only have left three chocolates cakes I give you uh, one normally 30 ringgit but if you take all I just give you 20 ringgit and I I I I give the one for free. What a shame for me who still have a salary to take all his cake without paying even though he said he want to give me one free. I know his condition. So I just I say okay. Really uh I don't know whether the chocolate cake is nice or not, but I more pity on his situation. I take all three, I give some money. And when he said, uh, Kaka, uh, this is so much, you know, I don't think what I give is much because uh, I think uh, I give because of my humanity, not because I'm rich. No, I'm not rich. As long as you are academician in Malaysia, you are just okay, not rich. So I, I uh, no, not rich. You are not a businessman, you're not corrupt, you are not rich. You are just like this. So I give for my, and then when I want to go to my car, suddenly he shouted at back. With this, with this, this is like, make me feel like my country facing a real problem. And the problem is so real. When he said, shouted, I said, Kaka, I pray for you. I pray for you. God will help you. God will be, give you more and more so then you can help people like me. It made me like, oh, it's okay. I, I calm down. I uh, me myself is I'm I'm, I'm a very sensitive person. When people in the difficulties, I can help. I try to get my best to help. But when the people pray like that, suddenly I feel like, what is going on actually in my society? What's the law can do? Meaning the law can't do anything. Is we back to one one's level, which is humanity. So are we now talking about humanity control the law or the law that control humanity? For me, humanity should control the law. And the law is not to just punish or to prevent. Law actually to give a more peaceful and guidance to the society. That is the law. That's why Lord Denning said in his book, that is compulsory for all the first year students in law school in Malaysia to read, law is a semen and a basic society. Before you talk anything, what is the basic? Like you are baby, when you try to stand, you try to walk, what is the best for you? Your mom will find the best shoes for you. You cannot use your father's shoes because you are start to walk. And there's a special shoes for the kids who started to walk. The soft one, the, the material is very good. So you can walk stable, right? So this is same with us. With us because for me, this is why we need to to have, um, uh, I can say, uh, a balance in the society. And what is the law that actually can do that? The law that being governed by the goods and, the, and justice prevail. So this is for me, we can't just simply thinking law is just to govern and then punish and then finish. And we will feel like, oh, okay, no problem. Beside, we look also people who make the problem. Okay, I, I feel very bad because uh, lately we see many people um, in Malaysia when they lost the job and all that, they normally go to the zakat center because we have the, 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 the zakat center for Muslim. Somehow rather zakat also don't have enough money. So they say, go back, we don't have enough money. But, but we question that where is the billion of the zakat every day you collect? Then they say, oh, no, no, no allocation, no allocation. That's why I don't like people talking religion to me. I'm, I'm hate of it. I, I think um, I'm more, I more go for, for what kind of you, what heart that you have. You know, I don't like when people come to me and say, hey, you must portray yourself as a Muslim, you know. Muslim must be like this, like this, like this. And if it does anyone try to tell me like that, I will bash him or her straight away, straight on his nose. I would tell that first of all, I appreciate that people really want to advise me, but please do not 
try to become a god. God is a god. Human being is human being. Why not we have a good heart towards each other? Oh, that's why in Malaysia, people are so like, see, Muslim having dog. Woo! You can make the whole world collapse. Muslim having dog, haram, haram. I was like, are you, what is this? Don't you learn the four mazhab? You don't, you don't learn four mazhab. Very bad Muslim you are, I said. It's not like my husband. My husband a convert. So there is a dog near our house. It's dry. It's dry. According to Shafi'i mazhab, you can touch it. No problem. My husband followed the Hanafi mazhab. You can touch. Dry. No problem. You don't need to do all those, uh, you know, all those uh, cleaning seven times, whatever no need. But my neighbor saw that thing happens. And then there's a really a chaos in my WhatsApp group of the my taman, my, my residential area, was telling like, I saw one neighbor, the husband touched the dog, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I was like, are they talking about me? Then I said, why, who are you gossiping in this? Because I'm in that. If you're talking to me, please come to my house, I'll explain. So there is one come of old lady, she came and she said to me, you know that is haram, you know, we saw you and your husband touch the dog. I said, it's not I'm to touch the dog. I'm helping my husband because the dog is, is somehow rather is strapped in a big drain near our house. And the dog's like barking and barking. I think that as a human being, we have a God give the brain, meaning that that dog asks for help. I don't know even even the dog feel so happy to be trapped in the train. So I said, okay, and I had my husband, because my husband is a big size. So I said, this, this is a quite big dog. You, you, you pull it, you pull it. I, I try. Then I, I just help. And it's dry. It's a dry drain. So what's a big deal? Just clean like normal things. So what? And it's a big issue in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the residential area. Then I brought up this issue because I want you to show that you're facing how many shallow people on the certain very pathetic issue dog but then i come back and say you feel haram to touch the dog what else to eat the pork but i want to tell you you don't feel even uh, any feeling when you take drugs pox and dogs is a two animals that is nothing harm to you i don't eat pox because muslim cannot eat pox but i never condemn people who eat pox and i also not i don't have dogs in my house because we cannot have animal because my kids have the asthmatic. So, but we don't do harm to any animals, despite whatever animal it is. Because I think in a religion, we have to respect. But the problem with people who admin the law is thinking they are superior than others. That is wrong. And this, this practice is bring to the government, is bring up to our politician. For them, it's okay to be corrupt. It's okay. Because it's survival. And law say, okay, because survival of the politicians. You know, and I'm a good, I portray I'm a good Muslim. You know, I take bribe is okay because I want to help, let on to help my people. At the end, it's not help your people, it's help you and your family. That's why if you come to Malaysia, you see the politician house. Despite they are living in the very poorest state in Malaysia, the politician house do not have any, you cannot say, how? I say, somehow rather like, like palace, some is like mansion. They are politicians, and many of these politicians, Islamic way, claim. Now they are the one who are busy during this COVID to to get the more increment and to change their car. They say no, Toyota is not good. We want Mercedes. So all of this, uh, politicians in that certain certain state, despite this COVID, talking about how to change from Toyota to Mercedes. So I, 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 I'm, I'm questioning that. I said law play a role in this situation. We are running from the normal issue. You know, I open your, your, your mind to look at certain issue that we're having today and connect it with the law. And I think you should be curious about it because as a law student, you'll be practicing law after this. Are you going to... Um, Losing your principle because you at a law school, you say cannot do this. We have to be very clean. We have to do this. But if you join the government or you join any political party, that is the practice. And if you don't follow that, then they will say you are backwards. You not become their friends because you don't know that taking bribe is a normal and it start to become a culture. So how we want to do it, how we want to deal with it, that is the issue. This is why I why I, br I bring this issue today because I want the student to look on a different perspective 
do not like typical introduction to law. I don't need, even I don't want to do the slide. Because when I do the slide, the student have intention to look on their handphone. For them, it's like, what is law? Law is like this. I don't need to tell. You are a law student. You know it already. Otherwise, you are not in the faculty of law. You want to know something that critical, something that really, you know, agitates yourself. Like, okay, so what? So how, what can we do, doctor? How how we as young generation, you know, can prevent this thing from further, you know, we, we have. So this is the thing. That's why I think we, we should not look at law as just govern the people, uh, punish and be peace and harmony. Law can be questioned, but the practical way is, is it we do it accordingly? That is the best. Second, can we also punish the politicians same like we punish the normal citizen? Do not have the any like, okay, or oh, because you are ministers, oh, cannot, cannot, you cannot be punished, even though like I said, uh, they went to back, to, they went to abroad, they come back, they not want to do the quarantine because the quarantine is 14 days. Oh, I'm going to miss my area. So I don't want. And then, oh, oh, when people say, you, you don't go for quarantine, you know, you bring COVID maybe. Oh, okay, okay. So sorry for that. Uh, sorry. Okay. I, I take, take my five months of my salary. I, I, the act is actually... For me, a bribes. You bribe people by saying, "Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, I, okay, I, I give, I take, take, take my my five month salary." Wow, meaning I will trade the principle, the law with money. That's why we're not surprised to see the police officer is the highest group that taking bribes, because you trade the function, the principle, and the, the justice that's supposed to be upheld by you. It's not. It's not something surprise. Even among my my foreign student, that their car being searched by police, and the police will ask them a money, even though um they they have a student visa and also a license, Malaysian driving license. That's not a surprise. Many of my foreign student, even my, there is I have my Indonesian student, he himself have a Malaysian driving license, uh, have a visa student pass, all documented legally. The police stop him. And say that, oh, you're from where? I say, I'm from Indonesia. Oh, why? I say, yeah, he said, doctor, maybe he think I'm also labor same like the others, Indonesian. Then what you do? Uh, I say, okay, you look at all my document, my, my passport, my, my ID and everything. And he said, no, you are wrong. You are student. You cannot drive. What? I say, you can drive in Malaysia. You have the Malaysian driving license, not Indonesian driving license, Malaysian driving license somehow. What's the problem? They say, I cannot drive. It's wrong for me to drive. Then they say, they need a money. That is not, it's not. Yeah, I know they're taking bread from me. Maybe because I'm Indonesian. You see. So, uh, so what you do? I just say that uh, I cannot give you much. As I'm student. I can give you fifty ringgit. Then they ask him to out from the car. They search the whole car. Luckily, the car is only the book. He said, no money, no nothing. Only the touch and go. The 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 tolls uh, pass. And then he said, then the police find that no much money. And then the, the he said, okay, if you want to, if you want to to put the summon on me, he said, put the summon. I will ask my university to help me. Then they realize, that, okay, 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 you go. But unlike on one of my Arab student, he forget that he want to pay the money. He have, he bring 1,000 in his car. The police search the car. And then after that, okay, you go, you go. And then when he found out that that 1,000 is lost. See, it's happened to my student. And I'm brave enough to say this. So for me, what is this? And then suddenly you say, oh, all the reports must be done with this. You are the largest area. I think if you cannot trust the police, who else you want to trust? You cannot trust the police. You cannot trust the DPP also. You cannot trust the AG. You cannot trust the judge. So this is, our, this is a problem of our system. And that system is, is not a, that's something that's strange. It's almost all the country, especially third world country. That's why we cannot go beyond the third world country. We are still developing, 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 and everyone just put on sustainable development on us. Okay, okay, you people follow. Okay, you people follow. Actually, we're supposed not to follow. We're supposed to have our own identity, our own way, because you as Indonesia, you know the best for your country. I'm as Malaysian, I know the best for my country. But who wants to listen to us? Because we are not politicians. Uh, this is the thing. That's why I think, always I say, I'm very critical when I want to go for vote. Very critical. I don't look like, oh, this is an opposition, this is government, this is a free. No. I look the candidate, I want to know who is he. 
if I elect him, can he do the job for us? Not we have to go to him. Can he work for us? Because he being there because of us. Because of our vote. So he is our slave. He have to work. But now it's in another way around. People are barking and, you know, to the government. The government say, oh, it's okay. It's okay. We'll be fine. Okay. Just red door. Yeah? Okay. We uh, Be patient. Be patient. You as a prime minister, you can say that in front of a TV. Because when you go back, petrol free, this free, uh, your meat free, uh, water bill, electric bill paid by the government. So your salary is freely, fully clean to you. But for me, if I have a maid, I need to pay for the maid. I need to wait for the for the immigration, uh, the levy, the the insurance. So I until today I don't want to have a maid. And then my house being taxed, my car I have to pay the road tax every every year. Blah 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 blah. So all tax on the you know more people like me. So we are question it. We question it because we want you to know. This is what the the normal people and what else the poor people feel. Even to get one rice, one time to eat, also their struggle. So these people that they have to look. Unfortunate, the law that we do have is somehow rather not behalf of the poor, poor people. It's be a man, so be nicely, to cater certain class in the society. And you always listen that money is king. And I admit that, yes, in the scenario of my country, money is king. Even though you are doing a wrong things, but you have lots of money, people will bow to you. Until we, have, we catch about three or four, the Macau scam. You know, they, they are people are doing the illegal gambling online and their life is a really Maharaja. You know, they, they have their own fly, they have their own uh, private jet, they have their own mansion in Kuala Lumpur, and they are not highly educated. One is just former factory worker, one is just former sales girls, the husband and wife. But their life is more than the king, because they are the one who process the, all those uh, money laundry. But now, after the police catch them, and uh, the police also don't want to catch them, the police also get the percentage from them. Is the one who catch them is just the anti corruption agency. Uh, after anti corruption agency already get these people, then suddenly a police like even the, the, the statement from the police are also very soft. Oh, actually, they are not involved in scam. What we say, not involved in scam? Are you crazy? Oh, God must be crazy, I see. But actually, we found out the police also, at the, the high level, police also have a, every month get the money from this group. Of course, they will protect. Who wants to lose your 100,000, 200,000 ringgit per month? You don't want to lose it, right? So what the best is, you just come up with a stupid statement to ensure that people don't believe it. It's just people don't really believe it. So we question why police you say this kind of thing. You also get every man right. So they are suddenly tomorrow morning they make they make another uh, press press conference and say, oh so sorry yesterday the journalist is actually wrongly uh, you know take the statement. I was like, what a joke that you trying to tell us. You know everybody knows about it. So this is the things I want to tell you that the standard the law and the people and also our um our um i can say our uh system a judiciary system must be clean because uh, from i can see judges also not clean so how come we want to get a justice prevail if the judge is not clean and and i don't say that uh only in my country but also in other country also so this is the thing that uh, i want you to uh, to get from me today and I saw there is a few questions maybe for this half an hour I can take the question from from all of you so thank you very much and I'm I'm waiting for your question okay professor you have several questions already on the and the chat section okay um, from Muhammad Akbar Hello, Professor. I have a question. How is the corruption justice in Malaysia? And what is the most punishment for the corrupter in Malaysia? Because as we can see in Indonesia, there are so much punishment for the corrupter isn't going well. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Um, normally, uh, 
it's very hard actually to prove the corruption in Malaysia unless there is a report. And report must be done to the anti-corruption. We call it SPRM, Suruhanjaya Pencegah Rasuah Malaysia. This is anti-corruption or the anti-bribe, uh, now anti-corruption. This, the body, they have a special task. The people inside this, you don't know who. But if you make a report, they will read the report and they will definitely do the investigation. So from that, they will catch, they will arrest. They don't care. You are ministers, you are king, who you are. Do you, you have a proof? You will be remanded. And when you are remanded, in the remand proceeding, about three days, five days, seven days, depends. They will ensure they will correct you until you will tell the truth. Normally, you will tell the truth. Because if you are being put in the, we call it bilik gelap, huh, the, the dark room, then you, you will definitely will tell the truth because it's so scary. So you say, okay, I take the bribe. Okay, where you take the bribe? Okay, I take the bribe from this bribe. So that's why after seven days or a month, suddenly you can see so many other people being arrested. And there are so many money being collected. You know, you won't believe it. One officer, you know, they got two million cash in the house. I was like, what? Two million ringgit cash in the house. This is all the people who do dealing with the illegal things, especially money laundering. In Malaysia, they are very popular money laundering. And the money laundering is actually from the uh, online uh, gambling uh, and followed by the drugs and also by the human uh, trafficking. So we will go to the court. We have the Anti-Corruption uh, Act. And this is where we will execute you or charge you accordingly based on the fact and based on the evidence that they get. And it's very heavy punishment normally because there is no you can get bail. Bail during your case are being investigated. But if you are already there, we will use POCA. POCA is like uh, the emergency. Uh, and we use any other law. Previously, we have the ISA, but when ISA is, is, is withdrawn already and obsolete, we uh, replace it with POCA, uh, SOSMA, and the SOSMA is more on the security basis. Like if you are doing the subversive or terrorism, we use that act to prevent you and uh, arrest you. Uh, the, the POCA is more on the, the crimes, the serious crime, drugs, uh, uh, human trafficking. So we have to use all this so this is the group that last week, last two months, they are being arrested. Until today, they are still in this POCA and SOSMA. They cannot be bailed out. They challenge at the court, but the court rejected it because their case are so much. From their case, we got about so many people linked with them. That's why you sometimes you see the celebrity in Malaysia, they are very rich, whether they don't, you don't have a film, they don't have a scene. You know, you're like, you know, why you are so rich then like that? And we have one uh, cosmetic owner. I can see that the cosmetic, uh, no one buy his cosmetic, but his house, I'm telling you, he just built his, I think the one of a chair that he buy is one million. I said, wow, your ass must be very expensive then because you put it on the chair that one million. Then I said, one million chair and it's direct from Europe. The ancient time, I guess. So this is like, and I said, who buy your cosmetic? There are so many cosmetics in Malaysia. I don't see that your cosmetic is the number one. Then after the case of the Macau scam being investigated by this uh, corruption agency, he also involved. So then we know all those celebrities in Malaysia who don't have any filler, who don't have any song, but suddenly so rich, always in Instagram, they are the one who involved. So they have to be prosecuted accordingly to the act. Yeah. Okay. So you have your uh, very specific act related to like bribery, uh, corruption. Yeah. Yes. Almost similar with Indonesia, we have uh, uh, law number thirty one, uh, law number thirty one, nineteen ninety nine, and law number twenty twenty one regarding the the corruption and bribery. Okay. So. Uh, second question uh, from Mikea. Uh, mm -hmm. He have three questions. The first one: Does the fact of knowing law give us the right to counter the government? The first one. The second one: If the law enforcement is the way to punish corrupted people, what if it's the law itself which is corrupted? The second one, and then the third one, the last one. Uh, I think the secularism of the state is just a floating principle. What is your opinion? Um, three questions, yeah? Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, does the fact of knowing law give us the right to counter the government? Yes, actually, knowing the fact that actually we, we, we have a right to counter the government. Government are not, uh, cannot presume uh, they don't do any wrong. That's why we have. A, that's why in 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 the democratic way we have, uh, like in Malaysia, we have the judiciary, we have the legislative, we have the executive to be balanced. But normally, the executive and legislative is doing by the same people, and the judiciary got the salary from this executive and the legislative. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why many many people say, "I'm not going to bite the hands of my my boss." You see, I'm not going to. I also want to protect my position. This is what happened. So either you are brave enough, yeah, um, you know, are you brave enough to 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 counter the government? I think I think in Indonesia you are more brave. Your people are more transparent uh, compared in Malaysia because you people is like okay, why you question your 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 government not only by you showing that it on the on 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 road, you question is also in many channels. You know, and I think that the many people is actually uh, knows the thing, and they 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 are together. The only thing is somehow rather quite disappointed because um, we we know that uh, uh, we know that uh, the the people who can be with us, but they are choose to quiet because of the position. I met many kind of these people. I think if we know the fact that, that we have the right to counter the government, we're not against the government. We want to counter them for them to answer and to give the justification why the things happen. But they don't want to do that. For them, no, I don't want to you know, have a problem with government because I want to go for professorship. I want to get this. I want to get that. So this is what me feel like very disappointed. So actually, you have a right. Yes, you have a right to counter the government. The government are not, not got. Yeah, not got. They can be counter and be questioned to give you a justification why they do so. And if the law enforcement is the way to punish corrupted people, what if the law itself which corrupted? Okay, the point that uh, that you want to sell that how you pass the law, which is if the law is corrupted. Actually, the law is not corrupted. The only the application or the people who actually used the law to escape. For example, I think. Um, I, I think the way you can see many, many ways that the, the, the law itself, you know, actually to, to fund, punish the people is if you can see that the one MDB, when Datuk Sri Najib is the one who uh, gets uh, being prosecuted by, by the judge, you can see that the, the, the lawyers who uh, appear for, before him, I think sometimes they don't know what to say. They're just using the law to look as if the, the law is corrupt. They say, uh, Dato' Sri Najib doesn't know that the, the 2.6 billion involved actually transferred to his account. I don't think so. And they said because the Bank Act of Malaysia is not allowed or actually not acknowledged or not tell him that, hey, hello, this is 2.6 million come to your account. Why you blame the Act? The Act is a very clear, it's for the bank. Now we're talking about your account that from the money that we don't know where come from. And you start saying that it's donated by the prince in Saudi, donated from this, from that. I don't know why people love to donate you because you have a rich already. So this is the thing that people, uh, the, 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 uh, the, actually the lawyers, they are the one who try to push it around and, and use the law itself. You know, that's why they are studying the law, not because they want to use the good of it. They just want to say, OK, uh, we use it against, you know, against the, the, the good people, but it's not for us. The problem that I can see is especially when you when you arrested people with corruption, normally the lawyers were jumping and say, why are you? This is human right. The, the uh, principle, our principle in our constitution is like no one can be arrested, blah, blah, blah. You see? But actually, the, 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 the constitution are not corrupt. The constitution is there. The people, the lawyers who are dealing with the words is trying to twist. That's happened. So for me, law, we never have a law for to, to corrupt except in Africa. In Africa, the president is a dictator. The president changed the law without anyone agree with it. Otherwise, you will be killed. And they say, okay, uh, I'm supposed to be um, the president for this country only 10 years. So now I want to amend the constitution. I can be, anyone can be a president as long as they live. Why in during your term? Because you want to be a president for the rest of your life. That's why there are so many uh, coup or so many uh, civil war happening in Africa. Because you yourself using 
a corrupt law to create by yourself to ensure your position. But if you're talking the democratic country like us, we have to table to the parliament. And before being tabled to the parliament, our AGC is already see that thing. So I don't see that that the law itself is corrupted. Corrupted when you are done it with your own power, without consult anyone and pass it through the dictatorship. That one, yes. It's true. I think that's my answer. Uh, last question. Okay. The, uh, I think the secularism of the state is just a floating principle. What is your opinion regarding the religion and politics, maybe? Um, I think, uh, well, we're living in the system of politics and our politics cannot be separate from law. But the politician normally play with the law to ensure that the polit the the the, the what they you know um the uh, the secularism you know the uh, the secularism of the state is just a floating principle for me um actually you have to look on how the way the government act because if your government are just using it the secularism is just you know um just just to make sure that everything look nice but actually at the, at the principle only but then the practice are not then then the secularism are just just a base for me. It's just uh, just saying. Okay, some people don't like the secularism in Malaysia. The word secularism is quite taboo. When especially when we say, "Are we a secular country?" No, no, no. Malaysia are not a secular country. Malaysia is Islamic country. Why? Because the head of of the country is Muslim. The prime minister Muslim. The blah 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 Muslim. Okay, I I don't want to have any any confrontation with this kind of people. But for me, we are a secular country. For me, uh, the way of practice it on 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 the papers. Yes, you can say okay. Our our uh, our head of a uh, military, a uh, Muslim. This one, a uh, Muslim. But what type of Muslim they are? I'm questioned to that day because you're talking about Islamic country. You have to uphold the principle of humanity to everyone, regardless the race and the religion. As long as you are just behave only nice to your people, to the people with same religion or same background with you, then where is the other human being to you? Or is it like, okay, just because they are not Malay Muslim, so we can do anything to them? Then we are secular then. So why, 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 why claim that we are Muslim country? When the principle of Islamic are not being upheld in the way you manage the country. I always question that. I always look at the value. I don't need you to 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 say, wait, you know, we, this is this is us. This, is, but I think no need to do that. This is the point: is are we practicing it? Are we doing a good? If you are not, are we? Are what? So what was the difference from us and other country? Don't bullshit. Just say we are a secular country. That's it. How you do, how you deal with your people is the main important. Whatever it is, a principle you have, whatever you want to claim, are you being fair to the people? If you're not, then don't talk much. Please correct it fast. So it depends. That's for me, it's my opinion. Okay, okay. Thank you, Professor. Next question from Eliza. Good afternoon, Professor Salawati. I would like to ask about the poverty that occurred due to COVID-19 was all caused by the government not carrying out its function because before the COVID-19, poverty also occurred and much of it was caused by the equality uh, of human resources that were not qualified. Thank you, Professor Salawati. Okay. Uh, I love the second question. We already have the poverty and the poverty come in many aspects. Somehow not really the people, sometimes they are not have the good chance to prove themselves. Some they are really not lucky in life. There are so many things. But in the COVID-19 now, it's worse. Because why? Our government do not have a long-term plan to do with this kind of people. I take example in my country, but now we got almost 190,000 people who are unemployed. And we have a graduate that graduated from our university, college, you know, many, many higher institutions, almost about half a million per year. So, what the government want to do with these people? Are they saying that this is the normal things? Or they say, okay, you are poor, then living in a poor forever. No, I think the, the, the quality of human resources is actually more on how the government deal with it. 
the system of education, the system of uh, human resource, how the law that you deal with it, because you don't do it properly. That's why it's happened. And how much time that, you, how much I think, what the agency that been tackle all this issue? How this, this agency work with the scholars, work with the expert to see how? In Malaysia, we have the Kazana Institute. Normally, Kazana will work with the independent NGO, uh, two or three of them, to do the, the this uh, poverty in Malaysia. And they are the one who come up very fast rather than the government. They say the government really failed to, to function effectively during the COVID to ensure the, the poverty line and also people living in poverty get what supposed they get. You know, now I can say to you, government cannot increase many of the monthly allowance for the poor people. They are still maintaining 300 ringgit, 250 ringgit, which is for me is, is nothing. For the two days life in Malaysia is nothing. What can they do? If you want to buy the 10 kilo rice, also the good one is already 60 ringgit Malaysia. Unless you buy the low class rice, which is, you know, the mixed one, that is 17 ringgit. How long you can eat like that? How long we want to give the, pov the people in living in poverty um, eating that kind of foods? Because when they eat not good food, they are tendent to get more illness. And their illness are normally cancer, you know, the, the, the kidney problem, which is a lot of money and they don't have. So we are double I'm bi biased to them because of that, giving a low uh, kind of food and after they're having a sickness and we are talking that they are the burdens of our country. So that's what I said. The government must function fully and the government must bring all the scholars and all the people sit down, you know, okay, what's next for our country? The government cannot just thinking like, okay, scholars, you can write and we will look at it and see how. This is what my government doing now. That's why I, I, I think that that's not the, supposed to be. The government must call, it all, call all those NGOs, all the scholars, sit down. Okay, what do you think about it? The economics things, the social things, the, 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 uh, the education, this is all. But I think the point is we are no more like before. We cannot simply say, okay, we did well, but the COVID is not you know, unprepared. Unprepared is always one year. Whether you prepare or not, you have to prepare. How to deal? That's why we have to see. That's why our budget last week, um, many people critics on certain issues because we have a right to critics. And that's why for me, don't blame on the quality of human resources because it's come back to you as a, as a government. You must have that uh, you know, standard to put in your country. If Singapore can do, why not us? I don't blame that saying, oh, Singapore is a first world country. So what, we can't do that. Singapore doesn't have any resources, but they mean they can do it. So we have a lot of resources, we cannot do it. Because why? Because we already, you know, we already normally love to look on what the practice already in the country. Not want to go, you know, beyond that. That's a question. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. Last question uh, for this afternoon. Good afternoon, Professor. Uh, my name is Rosemary. I have a question. If I'm not mistaken, you say that the government should listen to us as a people who study law. But what if they don't want to listen to us? Because, for example, in Indonesia, there are some legislation that are being established, even though there are many people who think that the legislation is unfair and needs to be reviewed and rearranged, including people from a law field or subject. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, yeah, I, yes. The, the good government must listen to the all law school. Look at Philippines before they amend any laws, they have to go to about forty eight law school in Philippines to get a bless from the law school. That's why somehow rather I really have a high respect to the Philippines government, despite Duterte is crazy. Because why? Before they amend anything at the parliament, they consult the all law school. You know, forty eight law school. And the law school will have to give their reason whether they are support or not support and why. You know, justification. So all the parliaments uh, in Philippines, when they uh, pass the law, you see, no, not people angry because it's already been referred to. Not only AGC, but also to the, all the law school. And all the scholars sit down and all the students discuss it. Can we allow this thing? If we not allow, why? If we don't, how? You know, because I have um, I, I have friend with uh, Prof. Ruke, and he now is advisor at the Malacanang. He was telling me that 
if somehow rather he said why country like Malaysia uh, can only use uh, AGC only because the people at AGC this is their work they have to sit down and look but they are not scholars they don't know what happened at the field sometime rather maybe they are in their own group so for me the best government is to consult and look at it and Malaysia only start doing the feasibility study on changes of law and and uh, bring all the scholars, the lecturers like me, in the group only back in 2017. We just practiced this about three years ago. When we are angry with Najib, and then when we are being replaced by the Pakatan Harapan, the opposition takeover in 2018, that is the time that we see the, the government of Pakatan Harapan is the only government that opened the door to all the scholars, NGO to sit down and talk. That's why you see many of the laws that pass uh, during this time is the law that already been looked by so many people. For example, like me, they caught me for the migrant issues. You know, so I come and say, okay, there's a few things for the migration that we have to do. And I sit down with the number one of the migrant workers in Immigration Malaysia. We discuss with that. And he gave his opinion. I give my opinion. We shouted to each other, no problem, because we want to give the best. To the law then what is the best is the law is passed start from first september all the employers and employees whoever who employ the foreign workers you must pro pro provide them a good residential place if you don't do that we are not issue you a visa or a license to do business with the foreign workers with you so now all the the people have to you know the factory uh this thing they are finding a good house for their staff for the migrant workers we want that so the standard of living will be upgraded for the migrant workers in Malaysia. Okay, thank you, Professor. One more question. Yeah, there, there is one more question uh, from Raisa. Uh, good afternoon, Professor Salawati. My name is Raisa. I'd like to ask about the police corruption. Some time ago, the world was shocked by the PLM uh, Black Lives Matter campaign because of the George Floyd case, which was treated unjustly by the police. Therefore. Uh, some people who campaigned on this issue brought up the police abolition movement, not just in USA, but also in Indonesia. What is your opinion regarding the police abolition movement that has emerged? Okay, uh, I think actually uh, police brutality is not in US. Police brutality is happening in my country. Uh, if you read, the, the uh, I think uh, police brutality also have uh, uh, in many countries. But I'd love to refer to Malaysia because I think I, I, I don't want to comment on Indonesia because the fact might be wrong. But in Malaysia, we are being condemned at the international level because of a police brutality. I think in the in US, you can see it clearly more on racism. But in Malaysia, it's not racism because the person who died in the police custody is a Malay, is an Indian, is a Chinese. So, but the numbers that we question, Malaysia reached about 500 persons die in police custody since year 2000. 20 years with 500 people die is not a small number. It's wrong with your system. Why? Because we don't protect the people during their remand proceeding. The person who died is not already executed, no. They are not in the jail of a prison. It's a remand. It's in the police jail, in the police station. And all the cases, it's a sudden death. With all their bodies being, you know, uh, we know that they're being, being bitten. Uh, but the police say, oh, suddenly heart attacks. Suddenly pneumonia. You know, I, no, that's not happened. They, they kill them. Yes, it is. They kill them. And when we have them inquiry so the ngos all the the human rights ngos we say we need the police inquiry we need to have the the inquiry to each of it so we have an inquiry for the certain cases and when you open the inquiry you was like oh my god they clip the person's ears with the clippers they when they beat the guy and the guy is almost half a death and then you say oh give him a give him beer give him beer then he will be fine and the guy died and it's a healthy guy so this is what makes me feel that uh the police abolition movement actually uh we we need the police to be responsible to their to their job so in malaysia we acquire there is um uh the, the body that see the disciplinary of police and hand, how the police handle the the remand proceeding but the police 
it's like reluctant to do that because if they do that meaning they are being abide to show and to put all the cctv in all the police station and they don't want that too because if you do that we know that what time how many time they beat the, the 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 prisoners so they don't want it for them no uh, you can you can collect us you can bring us to the inquiry but we're not going to do that and until today no one despite we changing the igp and the igp say oh i will try to do the best to uphold the image of a malaysian police that's all good shit. not nothing happened there was only said they reject our demand to put a camera in every uh prison of remand they also don't want us to check they don't want the ngos to check they don't want anything they say okay if you're not happy just inquiry and we do it like certain cases but the 500 cases only two or three are go for the inquiry the three the 497 never go so are you talking about justice here we actually finish we don't have okay so uh that is all of the question from the students uh what a wonderful lecture from professor salawati <laughs> And before we close the session, uh, you may give your closing statement like for one until two minutes, Professor. I think um, I I really put high hope of, to all of you that uh, the all of you must, uh, I think the all of you must always uphold the principle of law. I know it's not easy, uh, but if you have that, you you will be protected by God and by people around you. And if you die, you die with dignity. Take my words. You die with dignity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Thank you. So uh, we've reached the end of this session. And then uh, on behalf of uh, Faculty of Law, of our dean, we would like to say thank you, Professor Salawati, for giving us the great lecture for this afternoon. Thank you. And uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Professor. Yeah, thank you. Sí,